What? Oh no, no, I don't mind. Ego is a literal living planet in the Marvel Universe. And not only is this planet alive, he's sentient with thoughts, feelings, and the ability to communicate. He's ancient and wise, and he can be kind of a jerk. Hey, it's lonely being a planet. But how could a planet come to life? Let's explore Marvel science. We only started studying and understanding planets in the year roughly, I would say, 1995. And now it's explosive where there's thousands of planets, planetary candidates and confirmed planets that we know of. And they're diverse. There's planets that are super, super hot. There's planets that are really cool. There's planets that have clouds covering them that look very, very volatile and dangerous. Um, there's planets that have multiple multiple planets in a system with them. There's a real diversity to planets out there. Sentience, you know, that ability for uh, an organism to change form, that ability for an organism to sense and adapt to its environment. We see things like that, you know, in real ecosystems here on Earth. There are bacteria and viruses and fungi that live in very different environments all over the Earth, and they communicate. Early on, when our Earth formed, it didn't have oxygen in the atmosphere. That was a byproduct of biological organisms releasing oxygen into the environment. And organisms like us couldn't adapt and evolve to that environment until oxygen existed. So we live on a planet that's a living planet. There's no hole necessarily to a planet. It's a, it's a, it's a composition of a lot of different things. There's a core, uh, there's a mantle, and there's a crust. As you get to the crust, there's oceans, there's continents, animals on top of that, there's us on top of that, and then there's this atmosphere that extends out. I prefer to call everything a world. So maybe we should call Ego a sentient world rather than a sentient planet. So as we explore farther into space and we learn more about different planetary systems, we're discovering that there are a lot of planets out there that are habitable. And it may in the future be that some of those planets do resemble ego and that their ability to sustain life is very different than what we have here and they're more interconnected. We don't really know what the boundaries of that life are going to be. Ego being a sentient planet is interesting to think of as heartwarming and lovely. But realistically, yeah, that's not gonna happen, but I would love for the ability to communicate with the, a planet to ask it about its past and how it feels about its future, how it feels about the Earth. For those of you who are interested in understanding the way science fiction becomes science fact, there's a lot of information that's available through NASA websites. You can also go to spacestationresearch.com 